In this episode of the Bandalord Perks Guide, we will look at the Roguery skill perks. By the end of the video, you will have a complete understanding of what each one does and which to pick based on your specific needs. I put timestamps in the description for your convenience, and without further ado, let's get started. No rest for the wicked. Both perks are tagged Party Leader. The first increases XP gain for bandit troops by 20%. We can see from testing, taking out a looter group gives 1782 XP without the perk and 2138 with the perk, which is roughly 20%. The second perk increases raiding speed by 5%, which we can see a 34 hour raid time without the perk, but only 32 hours with. A 2 hour reduction, which comes to nearly 6% faster. Sweet Talker. If we are attacked by bandits, we will have a chance to pay them off to avoid a fight. In our test, we see 152 dinar cost to let us go without the perk, but only 130 with the perk, which is a 14% reduction. The secondary perk is for governors and reduces the escape chance of prisoners by 20%. For our main, no rest for the wicked is the pick. Being caught by bandits and paying them off is rare, and even so, the cost isn't that high. Having 20% more XP gain for bandits can be great when you are able to convert them into elite troops with the 150 50 leadership perk veterans respect sweet talker is the only option for the governor pick deep pockets the first part of this perk allows us to double the amount of betting we can do in tournaments the standard bet size is 150 per round with four rounds per tournament at 600 dinars in bets we are able to win 1170 without the perk with the perk we can now bet 300 per round and win up to 92 percent more which is good money for the early game the secondary perk reduces bandit wages by 20 percent this group of 500 tier 2 bandits cost three dinars each coming to 1500 per day total with the perk the daily wage reduces to 1200 or 20% less. Two-faced. If you are at war with the kingdom or your criminal rating is too high with them, they will refuse entry into their town. With this perk, you can increase your chances of sneaking in. Without the perk, we have a 23% chance to sneak in, but with the perk, our chances increase to 35%, an increase of 50% total. The secondary perk removes the morale loss from converting bandit prisoners into troops. Without the perk, we normally get a minus two morale per troop, but nothing with the perk. Tough pick here. I tend to take deep pockets for the wage reduction, but the morale loss can be big if you primarily get recruits from prisoners. Either way, either would be a fine pick, but personally, I go deep pockets. In best light. Recently overhauled in 1.7.0, this perk allows us to forcibly take more troops from villages. Without the perk, we have access to 8 troops for free, and with the perk, that number increases to 9. The secondary perk reduces the recovery time for villages that have been raided. Without the perk, it took 12 and a half days to recover, but only 9 and a half with the perk, which is 24% faster. Know how. This perk increases the amount of loot you can take from villagers and caravans after battle. We can see in the testing, after defeating villagers, we see no difference in the non-battle loot, both with and without the perk. However, the testing with the caravans, we see 21,000 dinars worth of loot from this caravan without the perk, and 23,000 with the perk, resulting in 1,700 dinars more, or an 8% increase. It's possible villager loot amount is too small to notice a difference, but works great with caravans. The secondary perk increases security by one per day. While taking more loot from caravans can be useful in some playthroughs, it pales in comparison to in best light. Forcible recruitment is amazing for getting noble troops without needing relations and villages recovering from raids faster is S tier, making in best light the pick. Promises. The infamous food reduction perk. This perk reduces food consumption for bandit units. With 11 troops, we would normally burn through 0.8 food per day, but with the perk, this number drops to 0.3, which is 62.5% less. Be aware, food reduction perks also reduce Stuart XP gain by the same amount. The secondary perk increases the speed of recruiting bandit prisoners into our party. This tier 2 troop gains 15 conformity per hour without the perk, but 20 per hour with the perk, or 25% more. Slave Trader. One of the many options for dealing with prisoners is ransoming them off for dinars. Without the perk, our tier 2 prisoners are worth 12 dinars each, but with the perk, the ransom increases to 14 per troop or 16% more. It also increases our prisoner limit. Without the perk, we can have up to 15 prisoners, but with the perk, that number increases to 18, which is exactly 20% more. Unless you're planning on a bandit-only playthrough, I think slave trade provides a bit more value. Plus, there is a perk coming up that negates the second perk from promises, making slave trader the pick most of the time. Scarface. 
If you attack bandits, villagers, or caravans with a large enough party, there is a chance they will surrender to you. This perk increases that chance of surrender. For this test, we attack 10 parties from each group with and without the perk. With the perk, villagers surrendered 40% of the time, caravans 80%, and bandits 90%. With the perk, villagers increased to 60%, caravans to 90%, and bandits stayed the same at 90%. The secondary perk is for governors and gives a 5% chance to improve relations with a random gang leader by one per day. We can expect to improve one relation for every 20 days that pass, or four relations per year. If there are two gang leaders in town, we can expect to improve relations by two with each per year. And not very useful. White Lies Certain actions will increase your criminal rating with a kingdom, such as stealing from a caravan or villagers. This perk helps to increase the rate at which this number decays. If we are a vassal or mercenary, then criminal rating will drop by 1.5 per day without the perk and 1.8 with the perk. If we are not part of the kingdom but at peace with them, then it will drop by 1 per day without the perk and 1.2 per day with the perk. If we are at war with the kingdom, then it will drop only 0.25 per day without and 0.3 with. The governor perk is similar to the other, but works with notables and only a 2% chance per day. Totally useless. Criminal rating increases trade penalties and at higher levels will keep you from entering towns. If you find these penalties an issue, then take white lies. Personally, I take Scarface as I find surrender chance more useful. For the governor perk, they are both bad, but Scarface is slightly less so, making it the pick. Partners in Crime this is another perk that was recently overhauled and increases surrender chance of bandit parties by 100%. In the testing, I caught over 20 bandit parties and each time they offered to join. One thing to note, if the bandits would normally attack you due to having a lower party strength than theirs, then you will not have the option to recruit them. The captain perk increases damage done by bandits by 2%. Smuggler Connections this perk increases the body armor rating for gear that is rated as civilian by 10. In testing, we looked at cut damage absorbed, and without the perk, our armor absorbed 28 damage on average, but 38 damage on average with the perk. The secondary perk is tagged as party leader and decreases the trade penalty caused by criminal rating. Looking at a Sturgeon Trotter for sale, it would cost us 280 to buy it without any criminal rating, then 367 with criminal rating but no perk, and finally 312 with criminal rating and the perk. We pay 31% more when we're a criminal, but only 11% if we have the perk. Partners in crime is just too good not to pick. As long as we have enough troops to avoid being attacked by bandit parties, we can recruit them. Even if we don't want to recruit them, we can remove them from the map, which helps clean up around our fiefs later in the game. It's also the only captain option. One of the family. This perk increases all vigor and control skills of the bandits in our party by 10. To test this, we used a bandit-only army and fight it twice. Without the perk, it was a total loss, and with the perk, it was a very close victory. The same tactics were used in both, so I'm not sure what accounted for the huge difference, but I'm doubtful the perk was the only contributing factor. The governor perk allows us one more recruitment slot from gang leaders without needing the appropriate relations. Salt the Earth. Another villager loot perk, yay. With the perk, we should have access to 20% more loot. We can see in the testing, there was very little difference between having the perk and not. The governor perk increases tariffs by 5%, earning more profits for the fief. In all my testing, villager perks are underwhelming and having extra combat skill for our troops can be handy, making one of the family the pick for the main. For the governor, if you need more recruiting power, go with one of the family. For more income, take salt the earth. Carver. This perk increases damage done by civilian weapons by 10%. A civilian weapon will have this tag on it. We can see on average 26 bonus damage per hit without the perk, but 40 with the perk, which is an increase of 55%. It may be bugged with the two-handed mace, as civilian swords are more in line with the 10%. The captain perk increases damage from one-handed swords by 2%. Ransom Broker if you're the type to not let prisoners go after battle, then this perk can help you turn those nobles into cash. Ransoming these 10 nobles without the perk earn 20,000 dinars, but 25,000 with the perk or a 28% increase. The secondary perk reduces escape chance of prisoners from the party by 30%, but in testing it was difficult to notice due to the high amount of RNG with escaping. Without the perk, it took 24 days for the first noble to escape, but only 12 days with the perk. I don't think the perk is broken, but I think escape chance can vary so widely, making it very difficult to test. If you plan on using any form of civilian weapon, Carver is a great pickup. If you plan on ransoming nobles, as a source of income, Ransom Broker should be the pick. Carver is the only captain option. Arms Dealer 
Interesting perk for the roguery skill. This one reduces trade penalty for selling weapons. We test by selling 10 weapons without the perk and earn 187,000 dinars. With the perk, this number increases to 216,000 dinars or a 15% increase. The governor perk increases militia production by two while under siege. Dirty fighting. This perk increases the stun duration from kicks. Looking at the side-by-side -side comparison, we can see a bit of a difference. Without the perk, stuns last for just under one second, and with the perk, it's closer to one and a half seconds, or a 53% increase. The governor perk adds two food per day while being sieged, helping to slow down starvation. For the main pick, if you are struggling with cash, then arms dealer can help. This perk increases income for smithing runs, as well as selling post-battle loot. If you use kicks often during battle, then dirty fighting is the pick. Both are quite good. For the governor perk, dirty fighting is the pick as losing troops to starvation will easily outpace gaining two militia per day. Dash and slash. With this perk, we increase the movement speed damage bonus for melee weapons while on foot. In our testing, we see a 32 bonus damage average without the perk and 50 damage average with or a 53% increase. The captain perk gives a 2% damage increase to troops using two-handed weapons. Fleet footed. We have not seen a movement speed perk in a few weeks now. Let's see how this one goes. We start at 265 meter distance to the target and reach close range first with the perk. There is a 14 meter gap between the two, meaning the perk actually works. You must not have a weapon or shield equipped for this to work. The secondary perk increases escape chance of our nobles from mobile parties by 30%. I'm shocked to be saying this, but both perks are quite good and worth considering here. If you need more damage, take dash and slash. Fleet of foot can easily be used by placing your weapon and shield on your back, allowing you to utilize this perk during battle. The extra escape chance for nobles is nice for companion parties that like to get caught often. Dash and slash is the only option for captains. Rogue Extraordinaire. The final perk increases the amount of loot dropped after winning a battle by 1% for every level above 200. To set up this test, we found the biggest army we could find and tested three scenarios. Without the final perk, all the loot would sell for 234,000 dinars. With the final perk and level 275 roguery, we would have earned an extra 486 dinars, or 0.2% more. Finally, we tested the level 330 with the perk and earned 26,000 dinars more. I reran the test again using a much smaller battle to test 275 with and without the perk. It seems the loot drop post battle will fluctuate around 2 to 4% without the perk, and with the perk came in right around 3% more consistently, which is well within the margin of error. I'm not sure why it seems this perk doesn't work at the lower levels, but unless you get to 330 roguery, it's certainly not worth going for. We are nearing the end of the video, which means it's time for the bonus. One of the most fun experiences I've had in Bannerlord was a bandit playthrough. It was also the most frustrating to start, so for this part, we will look at a much better way to approach the Bannerlord bandit playthrough. To help us out, let's take a look at the perks we will be aiming for. One of the most important perks here is the level 250 crossbow, reducing wages of higher tier ranged troops by 50%. As a bandit, keeping overhead down is no easy task. For the roguery perks, we take anything that will boost bandit troops since our party will consist of bandits only. We also need more ways to make money, so stealing from caravans and ransoming prisoners for more money will be key. The most important perk is 150 partners in crime, allowing us to recruit bandit troops for free 100% of the time. Finally, we take an easy steward perk, reducing wages by 5%. A penny saved is a penny earned. Batania is a good choice for a bandit playthrough, giving that crucial movement speed bonus in woods. However, I think Valandia can be just as good giving extra renown and a bonus to mercenary contracts. This will be key to getting our economy established. Our beginning setup will consist of a light crossbow and up to three bags of bolts. As always, we don't need any clothing or equipment, so sell it all. Starting out, our main goal is to reach clan tier one as fast as possible. The safest way to do this is to take on looter groups by ourselves. If we stay solo, renown game will be much faster. So take prisoners, but don't recruit any for now. Once we reach clan tier one, we can become a mercenary and begin recruiting bandits to join us. Now the real bandit tree begins. Take out villagers, fight caravans, raid villages, all the usual bandit stuff. Our main goals at this stage are to continue to grow our bank account and leveling up roguery to 150. Stop at all castles and towns possible looking for prisoners to break out. It shouldn't take too many prison breaks to hit 150. The transition into late game happens when we reach level 250 crossbow. At this point, we only want forest and step bandits as both will have a 50% reduced wage. Step bandits are nice for movement speed, 
Speed and Force Bandits will shred just about anything they shoot at. From here, we can declare war on everyone and have fun causing mayhem. I like to declare war on all but one kingdom, giving us a place to call home. Personally, I find late game gets a bit stale, so I'd like to give myself tasks to accomplish. One of my favorite tasks is to reduce a town's prosperity by a certain amount, completely destroying the owner's hard-earned income. This can be done by raiding villages consistently, keeping village hearths below 199, and sieging the town down. It's really fun to do great damage with such a small force. If you want to help me out, don't forget to stab that like button before you leave. If you want to see more videos and guides just like this, consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments section below what topic you would like to see covered on the channel. Up next, we will look at all of the charm perks. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.